Well, we're back with uh, Paula Gunn Allen, and she will now be reading from some of her poetry. Um, Professor Gunn Allen. Hi there. Um, I want to begin reading with a poem called Grandmother, and it's about the spider grandmother. Out of her own body, she pushed silver thread, light, air, and carried it carefully on the dark, flying where nothing moved. Out of her body, she extruded shining wire, life, and wove, wove the light on the void. From beyond time, beyond oak trees and bright clear water flow, she was given the work of weaving the strands of her body, her pain, her vision into creation, and the gift of having created to disappear. After her, the women and the men weave blankets into tales of life, memories of light and ladders, infinity eyes and rain. After her, I sit on my laddered, rain-bearing rug and mend the, tear, the tear with strength. This is called Kopishtaya, which means a gathering of spirits. Um, not spirits like you and I are here together in spirit, but spirits like people that don't have the kind of bodies we can usually see. Because we live in the browning season, the heavy air blocking our breath, and in this time when living is only survival, we doubt the voices that come shadowed on the air that weave within our brain certain thoughts, a motion that is soft, imperceptible, a twilight rain, a soft feathers fall, a small body dropping into its nest, rustling, murmuring, settling in for the night. Because we live in the hard edge season, where plastics brittle and gleaming shine, and in this space that is cornered and angled, we do not notice wet, moist, the significant drops falling in perfect tears that are the certain measures of our minds. Almost invisible, those tears, soft as dew, fragile, that cling to leaves, petals, roots, gentle and sure every morning. We are the women of the daylight, of clocks and steel foundries, of drugstores and street lights, of superhighways that slice our days in two, Wrapped around in plastic and steel, we ride our lives. Behind dark glasses, we hide our eyes. Our thoughts, shaded, seem obscure. Smoke fills our minds. Whiskey husks our songs. Polyester cuts our bodies from our breath, our feet from the welcoming stones of earth. Our dreams are pale memories of themselves and nagging doubt is the false measure of our days. Even so, the spirit voices are singing. Their thoughts are dancing in the dirty air. Their feet touch the cement, the asphalt, the lighting. Still, they weave dreams upon our shadowed skull. If we could listen, if we could hear. Let's go then. Let's find them. Let's listen for the water the careful gleaming drops that glisten on the leaves, the flowers. Let's ride the midnight, the early dawn, feel the wind striding through our hair. Let's dance the dance of feathers, the dance of birds. Um, that, those both are in my most recent collection, which is called Life is a Fatal Disease. And I named it that because I got tired of being warned that this and that and the other thing was 60% fatal or 70% fatal or 20% fatal. Believe me, you draw your first breath. Actually, um, sperm meets egg death in suits. You can count on that. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess you could say life causes death. This, poem, oh, this new book I'm working on is called America the Beautiful, and it's got a series of poems there, America the Beautiful, and this is number 10. The sand pounds the surf as huge rock swallows sprayed. It is not their first breath and surely not the last. Sister stones raise their noses in the air, the rest of their vastness hidden modestly beneath the waves, 
of sun-stung day. On the eve of yesterday, the flowers lowered their faces and grimaced at the sanitized ground of their being, sadness radiating because they were fastened to one place. But when fog or rain fell, they knew they would face the sun serene because their children would wander far before getting trapped in their turn. Look, there's a furry bit of blood smearing the asphalt. Rabbit? Chipmunk? Squirrel? Look, those pines are laden with disease. Shameful. They don't cover the powdery crud clinging to their boughs. Shameful. They don't bow their heads, but stand earthbats proud as if they were nobility. Always wishing for a better place, unsettled minds cast lots like the god genius pushed away while clacking dice, chattering up the night made a gamer's day. I want to ask the trees if they're wishing they could move. Do they want to talk faster, go farther, get more? I wonder where trees stash their stuff, why they let vermin-covered critters use them casually and cast them off. I want to ask whether any bird, squirrel, chipmunk, wiccan, insect, or any at all remember to say thanks. Did they have good mothers to teach them to be polite, or were they raised in a barn? On the beach and inland as high as a high, high hill, the rocks go about their enduring business, shutting out the noise of transients, butterflies, ants, termites, me. I wish I could ask, how it is to live in more dimensions than one, if simultaneity is the same as timelessness, if I could think or speak so slowly, whatever they might say, I wouldn't hear. This is uh, America the Beautiful, 7-8. Gentle woman, Mother Earth, bitch goddess and her son, Game invidious now afoot, never gentle, never sweet, furious ever stark repose, angry bird tearing beak, disheveled but beloved, ever formless, ever grief, rusting sandstone mesas, enraging whatever touches them, bleached beyond respect, rock-washed surf and shore, never mended, ended insolvent, abject, no reprieve. Who's there to share whatever they're giving out today? Smells like roses, tastes like shit. Aromatic despair, where water striders, water web once offered sweet cold earth filter drink, now dead, now dry, now old trading posts stand still, sandstone walls and char, turmoil surfs brown and dingy, where the deeps should profoundly stretch vast into the sky, roiling dissettlement. One can wish the tide went both ways, taking whatever's ejected by the sea, clear, clean away, ancient highway closing in, no lollipop trees, no psilocybin seas, no dreams of me, no songs of thee. I stand aghast. No present, no past. I just want to put aside the tree um, that you wanted and now that I sent you. Oh, here's one. Mm. Okay, America is the uh, beautiful sure. heaven. Ah, one of my favorites. It's the petunia of the spirit that remains, along with noble flocks, tenacious lobelia, stubborn dandelion, small cedar, scrub oak. The streets today are hot in this little town going big time. New crosswalks, high rents in this worker's paradise where labor's cheap and gas costs high. We live on the rocky shores of Earth's greatest sea where the Earth's greatest pines used to grow, where rhododendrons bloom like giant trees of light providing opportunity for one and all to take the easy way out. One bright petal salad and you're gone. Well-bred roses here 
are grown in pens to keep out deer, although wild ones bloom free. Here is elsewhere, I've learned that when whiteout fluid thickens, it mucks up the line, blurs the print. I know that rivers can get that way, too. Surely you remember the nation's vow, as long as the rivers flow. Surely you don't. Any more, they vowed, as long as the grass grows. Sometimes I long for begonias, daffodils, honeysuckle, lilacs out of time. I like the way they set off neon and honky-tonk, highlight scat and rap, make a statement with bluegrass and blues. In the center of our town, there's a trophy. I saw it only by accident, though it had been there for more than a hundred years, maybe a little less. A huge chunk of redwood trunk, huge saws mounted against its vastness, as though to say, look, What hungry family men armed with steel can do, the dead tree bisected by the steel that downed it, guards the mansion that's now historical site, where photos of leading townsmen long ago hang, not one hungry family man, all well-fed, stern, sleek. Beneath the new surface of trendy shops and friendly folk, invisible war is raged. War on red woods, war on red people, war on poverty and impoverished, war on drugs, war on war. There must be a place for free-range deer, for grass growing wild and free, for lobelia and fuchsias, for deathly rhododendrons, for longing and rage in this place of 7,000 mad, whited-out souls and 300 mad Indians nobody recognizes. Just look around and see what is now, what should be, could have been, what's the use. There is reason enough for Indians to go mad, whited out over centuries, for water to get sullen and refuse to flow, for grass to sulk. Even the sky is crazy with rage, even earth gone mad. 